All right, so Joe Biden has officially launched what looks to be his first official military action as president of the United States. So first off, let me get this out of the way. We know exactly who the fuck Joe Biden is, okay? He has an extensive record in Congress, in the Senate, under the Obama administration, putting on full display for everybody exactly who he is, and that is a vicious imperialist. And it's not unexpected that somebody like Joe Biden would be continuing in the footsteps of previous imperialist presidents of the United States, like Trump, like Obama, like Bush, and go on down back down the line. Um, this is just U.S. foreign policy uh, continued as normal, and this is what Joe Biden probably meant when he said, let's get back to normal. So here it is. Joe Biden launches airstrike against Iran-backed militia in Syria. So Here's the top line. The Pentagon conducted airstrikes against what they say are Iran-linked militias in Syria on Thursday in one of the first known military actions ordered by President Biden. Days after the militia launched rockets at U.S. forces in Iraq and tensions between Iran and the United States continue to simmer. So this story ties into a couple different pieces of the United States and our foreign policy agenda. One is our presence in Iraq and our presence in Syria. And then the other one is our current ongoing relationship with Iran. So first off, the thing that all of these media outlets have just been glossing over with statements like this, you know, we have journalists out here saying the strike was defensive in nature, but was a response to the three attacks endangering Americans in Iraq this month. The strike was defensive in nature. Okay, so this kind of ties into our presence in Iraq and Syria. Why the fuck are we in Iraq and Syria right now? Answer that question before you tell me that this strike was defensive, because as I understand the situation, the United States illegally invaded Iraq and illegally <laughs> invaded Syria. And so if we are the illegal occupying force in both of these countries, please explain to me how this strike could possibly be under virtually any uh, circumstances defensive in nature. It's not defensive in nature because our entire presence in these countries is offensive. This is like the only analogy I could think of. I mean, it's really this simple. It's like if somebody broke into your house with a weapon and started killing your family members and then you shot back at that intruder in defense and then the intruder goes to court and tries to claim self-defense. That's what this situation is like. Okay, we don't belong in these countries in the first place. So to then say, oh, well, you attacked our invading forces in this country. Well, then we must strike back in self-defense. This is absolutely ridiculous, but it's the mindset that U.S. imperialists have had consistently for decades, okay? This is the mindset. It's that the United States, we are the global police. We can go around, set up military bases wherever we want. We can go put military presence wherever we want for whatever reasons we want. And it's by default the correct thing to do. It's by default the, um, the just thing to do because we're the United States, because we are the global empire, because we have this influence and control that everything that we do is by defense or by definition defensive and everything that we do is by definition morally correct and right and in you know in accordance with laws this is absolutely a farce okay this mindset that joe biden and other u.s imperialists have had consistently it's complete bullshit okay again why are we in iraq and syria right now in the first place that is a question that you will never hear them answer Okay, it's just assumed within the language that they use in these circumstances. And so here's here's a little bit of pushback that's been leveraged. Okay, the United States. So according to Mary Ellen O'Connor, a professor at Notre Dame Law School, criticized the U.S. attacks as a violation of international law. Quote, the United Nations Charter makes absolutely clear that the use of military force on the territory of a foreign sovereign state is lawful only in response to an armed attack on the defending state for which the target state is responsible, she said. None of those elements is met in the Syria strike. Okay, so it, is Syria currently, or is Iran currently, or is Iraq currently, or any of these fucking countries currently attacking the United States in the United States? No, they're not. Why? Because again, we are the illegal occupying force in their country. We are the offensive actors in this situation. And it's illegal. Justin Amash, a U.S. lawyer, it's also constitutional, according to Justin Amash, a U.S. lawyer who formerly served as a representative for Michigan's 3rd Congressional District, said the move was unconstitutional. He says, these strikes are unconstitutional and dangerous. 
there's no general authority for a president to launch airstrikes and president biden hasn't claimed that they were necessary to stop an imminent attack our constitution demands he get approval from the representatives of the people he's absolutely right this is one of those rare circumstances where a leftist like myself and a libertarian-esque person like justin amash would agree on something like this that we should not be intervening in unconstitutional and illegal acts with our military that are not even being approved by congress in this circumstance it's just biden launching an attack against these forces in syria and of course you don't even have to listen to me don't take my word for it take jen saki from a couple years ago when it was trump who was bombing syria she says also what is the legal authority for strikes assad is a brutal dictator but syria is a sovereign country and that's the main point that i want to drill out here because this is the same line that they they roll out for every single um act of u.s imperialism that they want it's always well if you disagree on these grounds if you say that we shouldn't be in syria or if you say that we shouldn't try to topple the for example the venezuelan uh the venezuelan uh, government under um under maduro if you say that we can't do that then you must love these people then you must be a huge assad fan then you must be a huge fan of uh maduro and all of their policies etc the default position is never just hey maybe we shouldn't go invading every country that we just happen to not like their their leader very much maybe we should actually act in accordance with international law maybe we shouldn't be taking these actions that are illegal and unconstitutional that's never even discussed in these circumstances it's always just oh well if you if you don't want us bombing syria then you must love assad and every single thing that he's ever done right oh you're an assad apologist right that's the type of language that they use in these circumstances but again don't take it from me take it from jen saki who is currently joe biden's uh press secretary also take it from kamala harris she said i strongly support our men and women in uniform and believe that we must hold assad accountable for his unconscious unconscionable use of chemical weapons this is an entirely different discussion that needs to be had as well with the use of chemical weapons allegation but i am deeply concerned about the legal rationale of last night's strikes so even if you were to assume that assad was using chemical weapons on civilians here's kamala harris saying that we probably don't have the legal rationale to act in the way that trump was doing and now in the way that joe biden is doing as well so you don't even just have to take my word for it because my position is the position that these people pretended to have when it was Trump doing the strikes. But now that it's Joe Biden and it's blue team in power, suddenly we're going to be hearing all of these excuses. Oh, it was defensive in nature because blue team is in power, right? I mean, it's just, it's absolutely fucking pathetic. Of course, we have liberals responding in this way as well. Oh, it's so different having military action under Biden. No middle school level threats on Twitter. Trust Biden and his team's competence. I mean, <laughs> this is literally like the meme, right? That meme where it's, you know, drone strikes that are coming in to bomb innocent civilians and the civilians are saying, oh, but I'm so happy that like, it's a woman finally doing it. This is that same exact mindset. So different. Oh, it's so different having military action under Biden. No middle school threats. So the strikes didn't change. The US imperialism didn't change, but liberals are perfectly satisfied now that there isn't a leader of the United States who's posting about it on Twitter while he's doing these bombings and then continuing on i mean this is this part's even worse such a quiet attack no drama no tv coverage of bombs hitting targets no comments on what a um, um on how presidential biden is what a difference oh what a difference what a difference well here's my counter to that there is no fucking difference okay joe biden is going to act as a vicious imperialist in the exact same goddamn way that donald trump did that obama did that bush did and go down the line of every single american president in modern history okay this is what we do and it's by default that we're in these positions it's by default it's just accepted as normal unquestionably right i mean i just think it's it's crazy to me that biden sits around pretending to be worried about oh well do i have the legal authority to cancel student debt and then he doesn't without any hesitation or without any questions ask if it's illegal to be participating and continuing our occupation of these countries or our bombing of these countries that's just accepted as the default, the continuation of the U.S. imperialist foreign policy agenda. It's never questioned. And so I want you guys to be aware of the types of language that they're going to be rolling out in defense of this type of thing. It's totally undefensible. There's absolutely no reason for us to be there. This is illegal. This is unconstitutional, as, as was just pointed out. Um, and this is just a continuation of the vicious U.S. imperialist foreign policy agenda that we perfectly expected to happen under uh, under joe biden's administration with the hiring of, of people like 
with the appointing of people like Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin now, who was a board member of Raytheon. And guess what? Joe Biden's one of the first weapons deals that Joe Biden did was a massive weapons deal with Raytheon. So this is what you expect from somebody who is completely swamped with the military industrial complex um, and, and expect to be continuing to hear this type of liberal defense of this imperialism.